I recently read, How Will You Measure Your Life? by Clayton Christensen. If you have a strong need to achieve, you risk over-investing in your work and under-investing in your family and friends. That's because work provides a clear and immediate sense of achievement, while loving relationships don't. You won't know if you've raised a good son or daughter until 20 years after the bulk of your parenting work. And you won't really know if you have an enduring marriage until you face many challenges and surpass a point when many people you know are getting divorced. If you take time to think about the next 40 to 50 years of your life, you'll realize it's the relationships, not the work achievements, that will provide the most powerful and enduring source of happiness. Author and Harvard business professor Clayton Christensen spent much of his life trying to get his ambitious students to invest in their relationships correctly. Over time, he found that the best approach was to teach his students to apply a business strategy called jobs to be done to their personal lives. You see, every successful business has a product that customers hire to do a job in their lives. For example, in the mid-2000s, McDonald's discovered that customers were hiring their milkshakes in the morning to add excitement to their boring commute. Milkshakes did a better job than alternatives like bagels and donuts, which were messy and consumed too quickly. So McDonald's tailored their milkshakes for the job by making extra thick milkshakes with a thin straw to prolong enjoyment and keep customers full until noon. Now, you might be wondering, how on earth does this jobs to be done business concept apply to my relationships? Christensen says, thinking about your relationships from the perspective of the job to be done is the best way to understand what's important to the people who mean the most to you. It can seem cold to think that you're being hired in a relationship to do a job, but the more you embrace the idea of being hired to do a job in someone's life, the more you truly empathize with other people's needs and pay attention to what you can do to make the most important people in your life happy. Continually making the people in your life happy will return huge happiness dividends over your lifetime. Let's explore possible jobs to be done in three so-called businesses. The business of your intimate relationship, the business of raising kids, and the business of being a great friend. First, the business of your intimate relationship. When you get past the initial dating phase of a relationship, don't be afraid to ask your partner, what do you need most from me? The answer to that question will probably be one or two of the following needs uncovered by marriage counselor, Dr. Gary Chapman. These needs are referred to as love languages. As children get older, your job as a parent is to embody your family values and impart those values on your children. This job requires doing the right thing when it's hard. Your children hire you to be an example so that they know how to make hard choices later in life. Lastly, let's explore the business of being a great friend. Why do your friends need you in their life? What emotional job do you do for them? Merely thinking about these questions will make you a more thoughtful and empathetic friend. Here's one universal job in the business of being a great friend. Now, it's not the only job, but it's an important job. I learned this job from entrepreneur Jesse Itzler. It's called the three C's. Compliment, congratulate, and console. Compliment by telling friends something like, it's so inspiring to see you run that marathon. A sincere compliment has more impact than you believe because people don't hear enough of them. Second, congratulate by saying something like, that's so cool you got that promotion. I'm really proud of you. Feel like their wins are your own and take friends out for coffee or dinner to celebrate. And number three, console a grieving friend by showing up. When something horrible happened to one of Itzler's children, his friend showed up at his door and gave him a hug and said, when you get news like that, you don't call, you show up. When showing up isn't an option, let a friend know that you're thinking of them and check back in regularly. In the end, day to day and month to month, you'll likely measure your success by what you get done. But at the end of your life, what you get done won't matter nearly as much than the number of friends who stepped up when you needed them the number of admirable values your kids display, and the number of years you loved your partner.
Your career is still essential. It provides stability and the ability to give to others. But if you have a free hour in your day or week, don't use it to achieve more. Use it to do a job in your relationships. That was the core message that I gathered from How Will You Measure Your Life by Clayton Christensen.